Okay. Hello, I got no, I'm gonna, I drew the short straw, so you get to hear me talk again. Um, so TMI for fun vertical profiles. I don't know how that came up, but it's really template matching to identify features in vertical profiles is our group. This is our lovely group, all of us up here. Um, <laughs> so uh, are you, you have a, a, pr a profile of some oceanographic variable versus depth and you're interested in, in finding some specific feature, like maybe a bump in velocity or an exponential curve or maybe a double diffusive staircase, something like that. Um, so we built this notebook where you can uh, select a template of some of these different types of features and then try and find these features in profiles. Um, and I didn't really read this bit, but I think that was most of it. Um, they're supposed to yell at me if I forget anything, but the idea is we kept this quite broad so that you could use it for Really anything where you have like you could You could be plotting against time instead of depth or some other variable or horizontal distance um, So we're trying to trying to keep everything pretty broad throughout this project. Okay, so our steps to achieve profile Nirvana uh, Shift return. Yes, yeah, so do you want me to just do this for you? Sure. Okay, so um, the user will provide two, a very complicated input here, just two 1D uh, arrays of oceanographic, uh, oceanographic data. So here those variables would be temperature and depth. And, oh, yeah, so we have lots of modules to input and then you load, we have just a data, a, a data set of CTD profiles from the North Atlantic. And so then the user can select from three different features for now, but we could add more features later. Uh, the first feature, or the first template to use that you want to try and find in your profile is an exponential curve. Pretty simple. The next one is so the zoomed in screen makes this one hard to see. Yeah. Uh, the next one is like a Gaussian bump. So we'll, we'll see in another data set later if you had like. Uh, uh, a current below the surface, you might see this peak in velocity, and this might be a feature you want to remove, want to identify in your data set, or if you have some kind of step in your data set you want to identify. So those are all examples of the templates, and then you select which template you want to use. So here we're going to use the exponential template, and then we use a cross-correlation function from SciPy to try and identify where this feature is found in the profile. And so we actually have an example here for um, the Gaussian template. So over on the far left, you see our little Gaussian template, and then this is some profile, say, of temperature. And just looking at this, right, you say, okay, that's probably kind of a Gaussian with the bump that we want to try and grab out from our data set. So the correlation, the cross-correlation between them looks like this. And how to interpret this is wherever the peak of this function is, is where you should center your template to best match the data. So we kind of cherry pick this example. It does really well, right? That's where we see this. That's the end. It's always the two points of presentation, right? And so then we are going to shift the template there and then separate out this piece, grab out this piece of the profile. And then we want to give some, uh, I'll come back, preview. Yeah, I'll get, <laughs> you want to give some idea of uh, how good of a fit this is. So if you have the exponential or the Gaussian template, you can just use the curve fitting function from SciPy and uh, calculate a fit and then do um, some calculation of the root mean squared error. And if you go, if you want to get more complicated with your templates and you <laughs> use something that doesn't have a well-defined template or a well-defined function, uh, to try and fit parameters to, you can do this uh, approach called Procrustes analysis. Uh, Procrustes was a Greek bandit who would invite people to uh, spend the evening in his inn, and then while they were sleeping, if they didn't fit on the bed, he would either stretch them or um, make them fit in other ways to the length <laughs> of this bed. And so here, this is useful for us because we can take something like our step <laughs> template we because we're not sure quite how well it's going to fit the part of our profile. The progressive analysis will stretch it and translate it to fit on top of our profile. And then we can calculate the mean squared error uh, from that aligned set of values. Also, I got to include this image, which I really wanted to. Yeah, we tried really hard to keep this fit in our <laughs> project. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're just using uh, root mean squared error to calculate the similarity between 
the bit of our template that's overlaid on, or the template that's overlaid on the bit of the profile where this feature seems to appear. Um, so here we do, we're doing that. Um, yep. Do you want me to spend more time on that one, or no? I think that was good. Okay. Um, yeah. So for using the exponential function on our set of profiles, so this was a set of profiles going from uh, east to west across the North Atlantic. Um, so east to west is across. Actually, I guess it's really east west this way. Which is my bad. But we have now we have a root mean squared error for how well you can fit an exponential to each of those profiles. Um, well, to a piece of each of those profiles in reality. And, and some reformatting. So then we did some reformatting uh, to get because we were just using NumPy arrays and keeping it pretty basic. And then we moved it into pandas arrays to make some more interesting plots. Yeah, so you can do stuff like look at a histogram of the root mean squared errors across like all of your set of profiles. And so this, you might see some clustering of profiles where there is very clearly an exponential and then some that are very poor. And that would, you know, then you'd be able to say like, okay, I clearly see when there isn't one versus when there is one versus here, there's kind of Sorry. a continuous distribution. Um, so it's perhaps a little bit harder to say when there is an exponential and when there's not. Does that make sense? We also made this pretty map. Um, it doesn't you quite can, You can hold her. Sorry. Can you hold her? Yeah, uh, and it, you know, we were actually having yeah. trouble with that. Oh, and it used, be be <laughs> um, <laughs> it used to be interactive. It to be. But um, this was kind of a cool first order. Game and <laughs> it off. So what's shown here, uh, lighter colors indicate a lower root mean squared error. So that means that that profile looks more like an exponential versus higher number means it looks less like an exponential. So we have these set of profiles in some quieter oceanographic regions on either side of the mid-Atlantic range that do look more exponential and this seems to have caught that versus profiles on the edge, which are not doing so well. Um, so that was kind of cool. It seems to be working generally. Okay, and yeah, so now Anna's going to talk about another data set. No? no she's, Anna wasn't going to talk about it. It depends on whether you have the fits in here. No, we just have a pretty plot of the equatorial undercurrent. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the undercurrent is a great example it. of when you might want to use the Gaussian. Yeah. So here, yeah, you could find fit a Gaussian to here, and you can. We don't have the figures here, but you can identify it, which we saw up here, I guess. Yeah. See, this was that was data. Yeah. S I D C P. Yeah. So if this was um, and is data here of velocity, this would be the peak in velocity mm -hmm. from the yeah. undercurrent, and you could resolve that. And yeah. I would. I would add that. Um, one of the things we loaded at the beginning, it's a module we're working in. So yeah. maybe this can become a package. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> this is this is the module that we wrote. And then you can use the, it has a wrapper function that like you need to define the data and the plotting needs to be added into that module still. So that's why we're doing that later on. But in principle, the idea is that you load this function and edit this module, and then you can use the function from the module to do all this calculation like with one line of two lines. Thanks. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> oh, by the way, the question was to be in the form of a question, not a comment. <laughs> Very important. So I have a question. Yeah, really. Um, did you do the purpose or I, I didn't see that? I think there was a where it says uh, print. It's, it's not, not available here. yet. It's on my local copy. We didn't get it in here yet. Do you know about a language called Yeah, that's what I was using. Yeah. <laughs> minimal rewriting, minimal uh, remaking of the wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just as kind of an obscure library. Yeah. Yeah. I often that you find it. It's pretty.